Whether it's a burger or whether it's a sandwich doesn't make any difference because the chopped cheese is all f***ing delicious. If you travel to the New York region, you can go to a bodega, which is essentially a uh, corner deli. And they sell everything. Candy, cigarettes, sodas, toiletries, incidentals. Oh, wait, wait, what are incidentals? L little things that don't make a... They sell them, and they also sell food. You can get uh, uh, prepared things, you can get stuff to go, you can get uh, pizzas in some places. You can also get the omnipresent chopped cheese, which, unlike its name, is not really ch cheese that's been chopped at all. What would that sound like if you were ordering one? <laughs> hey, chopped cheese. Hey, <laughs> chopped cheese. <laughs> Fuck, I got your fucking chopped cheese right here. Uh, that might be Philly, I don't really know. But we're gonna make it. I've had one once, and the memory of it, the deliciousness of it, is, is right here. Centered prominently in my sensory receptors. It was so delicious. And it goes together like this. It's super simple. You probably have most of the ingredients at home right now, with the exception of the ground beef, and then you just gotta figure that part out and we're good. We're gonna make like 14 of these things by the time the day is done, because they're gonna be so damn good. Everybody's gonna wanna be eating these. So here's how we start. We start with two burgers. And yes, of course they look like burgers and they are ground beef in the burger shape. You could start with loose ground beef, but I think there's something special about starting with this and then searing it and getting the good color and the crisp on it before you start to chop this. This gets chopped. And some onion goes on the flat top too and it gets chopped. The cheese, no chopping there, none. And by the way, if you've got nothing to do right this second, why don't you uh, subscribe to the channel? Hit the like button. Ring the notification bell. What do you say, Max? Smash it. Smash the notification. I said I'd never say that. Smash the notification bell. All right, we keep cooking. We start with a little oil for our onions and a little oil for our patties. We'll spread this out. The onions will go on first. Beautiful. And the patties, we will season with some salt and pepper and on they will go. Then season the top. And that's it for seasoning for now. Something's going on next door in a big way. The onions are just softening. The patties are just uh, grilling, griddling. That's what they're doing. All right, we're not gonna flip the patties until they start to get some good color and crisp on them. So let's see what they look like. Yep, not there. I want more color on that. In fact, I'll turn them that way. Max wanted them the other way and too bad for him. It's about the food, not the look. Who thinks he likes to leave his meat a little too undercooked? I want to know in the comments right now. Give a sh**. People give a, say you like it still moving. I don't care. I don't like it still moving. But I do like a medium rare steak. Do you like a rare steak? Ah, uh, I'll have a rare steak. I prefer medium rare though. All right, so these guys now getting their flip. We'll give them a second or two and then we will begin the chopping process. All right, so now we'll just do this. Notice we're chopping the patties, not the cheese. And now the onions come in and they go on top and we continue. But you want it pretty small. You want the pieces pretty small, I mean. All right, let it sit for a second. Let's start the bun. And here's what we do. In a bodega, they would use like a press to get some marks and color on their bread. I don't have a press. So I'll use my ridged griddle pan and a steak weight. So named because you can't put them on steak. And just leave that for a second. We'll do that on both sides. All right, let's have a look. Give this guy a turn. Beautiful. Ow. God, why am I surprised when this shit's hot? All right, the weight goes back on. All right, now let's cheese up our beef. <laughs> that sounded weird. Thank you, House, for sponsoring this video. We spend time talking about how important good ingredients are 
for the food and the recipes that we make. But are we thinking the same about what goes into the alcohol that we drink? Look, we've talked about house before. Clearly, I'm a fan. Think of it as an aperitif that's farm to table, made in Sonoma by a couple. They use only natural fruits and herbs that they grow on their very own farm to go into these. And last time we used this one, citrus flower with Prosecco for an amazing cocktail. But today we're using peach passion fruit to make a couple amazing cocktails. You're gonna like these. First up, ice, peach passion fruit, and tonic for one of the most refreshing drinks ever. And of course, tonic's cousin, soda water for an equally delicious but super clean flavor. And then my favorite, just the peach passion fruit on the rocks by itself, okay with a little star fruit too. It is so delicious. And by the way, there's less alcohol. It's 18% alcohol. And come on now, a little less alcohol is not a bad thing. Right, Alan? Alan? Oh, and by the way, the first 100 people to click the link in the description will get $10 off their purchase of two bottles and free shipping. Come on, you gotta love that. Cheers, house. All right, so here's what we do. We get this in one nice little line about the size of your bun and now the cheese goes on one two and three so let's just give our friend a little help with some water and a lid and in about 30 seconds this will be beautiful and look at that We'll just let that finish by itself and we'll prep our bun. We'll just let that finish by itself, then we'll go prep our bun and then we'll help the guys build that house behind us. Okay, so let's cut our guy open. We're gonna leave a hinge, right? Just like this, all the way down. And open them up. Beautiful, okay. The traditional components now of our chopped cheese are mayo, both sides. And they would use ketchup. I'm gonna use this Americanized style chili sauce which is not so different, but just a much better flavor. And then we'll give these guys a quick spread. And now if you're ready for the fun part, let's get the beef. And then we come like this, oh, and we're out. Now we got thawing, fabulous. And in we go, wow. Oh, I love this. Wait, little extra. The few bits I didn't get are there. And now the only other two things it gets, traditionally now, are some iceberg lettuce for a nice chili cool crunch and sliced tomatoes. Right, right down the half. Okay, fine, a little pinch of kosher salt and pepper because, and we try and close up our guy. We try and close up our guy. I think I made this guy too big, Max. And that is one messy but unbelievably gorgeous chopped cheese. So I don't know how to do this. I mean, come on. Let me just cut. I'll just show you what all this is about. And I think you would agree that this is something that looks like it's going to be freaking amazing, right? Do you hear the crisp on the bun when I cut it? That's what you want. That's why you do that. That's what that move is all about. A soft bun wouldn't cut it. You want the texture on the outside. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with all this mess in my hand, I must take a bite. This bite right here, that bite, this corner. This is where I'm starting. I sometimes I'm not sure. I'm like, oh, do I go here? Or do I go here? I know where I go today. I go right here. Oh God.
It's not a burger. Mm -mm. It's definitely a sandwich. The flies want this. It's definitely a delicious sandwich. And don't jack around with the cheese. Don't go putting some crazy fancy thing in here thinking you'll make it better because you won't. Because this American cheese melted into this beef and little bits of the beef now have gotten crispy with the onion on the flat top. That's what this is all about. This is insane. Crunch. Oh yeah. It's impressive. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You? This? It's a date, and it will be love at first bite. 